Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can upload the files to IPFS and download the files from IPFS in two different methods. There are multiple methods available to upload the data and retrieve the data and this is the simplest way of doing it as you are the beginner. So if you already know how to do uh, upload the files in IPFS, probably you can skip this video. This is not for you. So if you are following already my series, just stay tuned. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn CMD command terminal and here I'm going to type IPFS and I'm going to turn the daemon. So here I have a web UI. This is the first method of doing it. So you go back here and do IPFS. Next, you can go over here, you can find an option files. Here you have an option for import. Click on import and select this file. So you will select the file, whichever the file you want to upload. Let's say I want to upload this file. Okay, double click it. Now the file is successfully uploaded to IPFS. Now if you want to see, you can copy this CID. So I'll tell you what is a CID. Do you remember we were talking about the cryptographic hash, right? This is what it is. This is the hash of that particular document. So if you have this hash, this hash you can be able to retrieve the file even if there is a server or even if there is a hundred nodes or even if there is a two nodes you still can able to retrieve the data from IPFS network. Let's see how you can do it. You can go over here you can see share link. This is the link where you can find your data. Just copy it go back here and paste it. And there you see now the data is stored and this is what it is. If you see some time ago the file is in my desktop and now the data is stored in IPFS. The advantage of using this IPFS file is that you can be able to delete it, delete the file. That's the main advantage or you can rename it or you can download it, you can be able to do anything of your choice. This is one method of uploading the data and retrieving the data. Now I'm going to show you another way of doing it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close these two because we're not going to use that. I'm going to stop the daemon. Now I'm clearing the screen. Now what I'm going to do is that let's say I want to upload the same file again. So what I'll do, I'll type IPFS. Let me make this a little bigger. Can you see now? That's better. So you see, I'll have to type IPFS add and then you just drag this file and put it over here. Now you see the complete path of the file. And then what you'll have to do, just press enter. Now if you see, the file is successfully uploaded to IPFS. Now this is the hash of the file. Just copy this file, go to the browser and you can type IPFS and you just remove this one and paste the file and press enter. Or let's see some other file, let's say um, Google. Okay, let's take this image. So this is the image, I've just put it on my desktop. Um, let me rename this as a uh, Google logo. Okay, now go back here, close all the terminals. Now I'll go back here. I'll do the same process. I'll just clear it up. I'll say IPFS add and then you just take this file and put it here. Press and enter. Press enter. Now you see the file is uploaded automatically. So you just take this one, go back to the browser and you can see IPFS 
dot io and remove this and replace with this one now you see now the data is already in ipfs so how we can retrieve the data from here itself you can type ipfs cat and then pass the path now you see that the data has come but however this is not the way we retrieve the data but this data will work if you are looking for some file let's assume that i want to store some file let me create a file ipfs blockholic okay let me put some data hi there i'm learning ipfs from blockholic okay let me save it close it now i'm going to keep this file in ipfs you come back here and it's just the same process you type ipfs add and then move this file and put it over here press enter now the file is available here now you can copy this one you can go back to the browser and you can replace that hash with this hash and you can be able to see the data and you know the same thing whatever we enter over in the other here so the much faster way is let's put the hash here ip say ipfs cat and pass the hash and press enter there you see now the data is directly coming from ipfs that's all for this tutorial actually there is a lot many things to learn or explore in ipfs do you know that you can be able to download or upload all your website into ipfs and you don't have to pay any money to the server and make sure that your website is up and running it's possible do you know that the many of the corporates are using ipfs to upload or store their data because it's more secure do you know that there is a way you can be able to create your own private ipfs network if you want to learn more just subscribe to my channel thanks for watching if you are watching for my video for the first time please like comment and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching